Okay. We shall get started. <clears throat> Right. So, shall we get started? So, listen. Uh, the la next concept that we'll discuss is problems that are based on force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. Okay, if you take a current carrying conductor and place it in magnetic field, what is going to be the force it is going to experience? F vector will be equal to I into L vector cross B vector, or it is also equal to ILB sin theta, right? And what is going to be the maximum force that is applicable on this particle? Maximum force is possible when the value of theta is 90 degrees. So sine 90 is going to be one. So based on these formulae, we are going to solve the problems. The important point that we need to make a note here is how will you find the direction of force using the <coughs> Fleming's left hand row right we are going to use this condition right having said that let's solve the first problem a wire of length l carries a current i along the x axis a magnetic field b vector is equal to b naught into i cap plus j cap plus k cap tesla exists in space find the magnitude of the magnetic force on the wire Okay, so length is how much? L, current is I, and magnetic field is given as V naught into I cap plus J cap plus K cap. This is in terms of Tesla. Right. So, what is the formula for F vector? F vector is equal to I into L vector cross B vector. Am I right? So that's what we saw, right? So I into, what is the direction of L vector? X axis. So it is going to be L I cap cross B vector is B naught into I cap plus J cap plus K cap. So what will you take out? You take out all the magnitudes. So B naught into I into L into I cap cross I cap is zero. I cap cross J cap is going to be equal to K cap plus I cap cross K cap is going to be minus J cap. If at all you have a doubt of how these values are to be found, draw a circle, take I, J, K here. So anything in the anti-clockwise direction is positive. So anti-clockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. Is the point clear? Right. So this will be equal to B naught into I into L into minus J cap plus K cap, which is going to be the value of F vector. So they ask the magnitude of F vector, which will be equal to B naught into I into L into how much is this value? Square root of one square plus one square, which will be square root of two. So answer will be root two times B naught I into L. And this is supposed to be the magnitude of the force. That's what they asked. No, find the magnitude of the magnetic force on the wire. I hope it is clear. Right. So when it comes to the direction, you know that it is the direction of minus J cap plus K cap. Clear. So just make a note of it.
Done? Shall I proceed? So this is the value. So next one is the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field at a certain place is 3 into 10 power minus 5 Tesla. So horizontal magnetic field is written as B with a subscript H. How do you read it? It is the horizontal component of what? Of Earth's magnetic field. Okay. Just to give you a heads up of what I mean here. See, observe. Let's say I have a magnet. Imagine this is the uh, needle of the compass. Okay. So I'm going to suspend it randomly. I'm going to hold it like this. You are able to see it is rotating, no? But what will happen is after some point, it will come and align itself in a particular direction. So there are two things happening here. It is rotating, no? It is rotating because when I released it, I created some torque in it, okay? Whereas when I leave it like this, right? It is vibrating, you are able to see. It is vibrating, no? But after a certain point, it will get aligned in this direction. Now the question is, this magnet will get aligned in a particular direction only because of another magnetic field. Right. So let's take another example. So let's say you want to navigate using a compass. Right. So when I keep it like this, it is showing me a particular direction. Question is, how is it able to say that this is the direction in which we are supposed to navigate? Or this is south, this is north, this is west or east. How is that needle responding? Or this one is responding. It is because this magnet is responding to a magnetic field in the surrounding, which is due to the earth itself. So earth has a magnetism. That magnetism or magnetic field can be resolved into two components. What are they? One is horizontal and the second is vertical. In among which they have given in a particular location, let's say the place where we are standing, the horizontal magnetic field due to the earth is given by this value. How much is it? 3 into 10 power minus 5 Tesla. Did you get a perspective of what I'm trying to say? So this magnet is responding to some other magnetic field that some other magnetic field which is in the surrounding is what is called as Earth's magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field can be resolved into two components, horizontal and the vertical. Okay. So horizontal value is given here and the direction of field is from the geographic north to the, sorry, geographic south to the geographic north. Okay. So as of now, I'll write it as geographic south to geographic north. So whenever you talk about the directions, right? Whenever you talk about the poles, there are two kinds of north poles and two kinds of south poles. So one is called geometric south and the geometric north and the other is called as magnetic north and magnetic south. About which we'll be learning in detail in the next chapter. Okay. So it is important that you need to know the basics here. That is why I'm explaining. So what is the direction of field of this horizontal magnetic field? It is from the geographic south to the geographic north. So when it comes to that case, you remember you hold the camp, sorry, you hold the compass like this. You don't hold the compass like this and see. So when you hold it like this, this is how we navigate, no? So when you hold it in this way, this is south, this is the geographic north, means I'm the geographic north and you people are the geographic south. I'm sorry, reverse. I am the geographic south and you people are the geographic north. Are you able to understand? So this is the direction of the horizontal magnetic field in this location. Am I clear till that point? Right. Now, having said that, a very long straight current carrying conductor carrying a steady current of I ampere. A very long straight current carrying conductor is carrying a steady current of I ampere. What is the, if you observe this question, they cannot ask you what is the force on the conductor. The reason being, very long. So whenever you have this question of very long, right, they will not ask you the question of what is the force on the conductor, rather they will ask you the question of what is the force per unit length. 
that is how they can frame the question because when you write f is equal to something no you write it as bil sin theta when they say very long wire what is the obvious thing you are going to substitute l you will substitute it as infinity so when that is the case force will also be infinite there is no question at all but what i can do is i can always calculate f divided by l where this l is considered to be the unit length that is why the question is framed in that way are you able to understand so i want you to know how the questions are also framed so this kind of thing will appear at two places one is in this place and the second is in the concept where there are two parallel current carrying conductors that will be the next set of problems that we will be doing am i clear okay so very long state current carrying conductor is carrying a steady current of i ampere what is the force per unit length on it when it is placed on a horizontal table and the direction of current is from east to west so this is the horizontal table the wire is placed in the first place in like this so that the current is from east to west what is the direction of magnetic field south to north east to west is the direction of current so what is the angle between them so that's easy so for the first one f is equal to if i apply the formula of bil sin theta b is how much 3 into 10 power minus 5 i is i think it is 1 ampere we can take it as 1 ampere okay so for me the concept is important here let me take it as 1 ampere into l is there into sin of how much 90 so f is like this bring the l to the left hand side f Equal to three into ten power minus five newton per meter. It is a force per unit length. Don't write it as newton and leave it. Okay, that is the answer for the first part of the question. So, what about the second part? So, what is going to be the force experience force per unit length of this conductor on this conductor when the current itself is flowing from south to north? Cos sine. Zero will come. Answer is zero. Okay. So one common mistake that happens is, if at all you take the horizontal Earth's magnetic field to be vertical like this, if you take this to be south and this to be north, you will get both the answers same. Don't make that mistake. Okay. Whenever they speak about Earth's magnetic field, Earth's magnetic field is mainly used only for navigation purpose. And remember, for navigation, nobody will hold the compass like this and move. They will only hold it like this. Is the point clear? Clear. So just make a note of. Are you done with this problem? Are you done? Shall I proceed? Mm, yeah. So try this one.
That's a hyphen actually. So what is the answer? Or how to proceed? Shall I do? So let's try to understand this question. There is a current of 2 ampere that enters at the corner A of a square, uh, A of a square frame, frame of side 20 centimeter and leaves at the opposite corner C. A magnetic field B of 0.25 Tesla acts in direction perpendicular to the plane of the paper as shown in figure. Find the magnitude and direction of the magnetic forces on the four sides of the frame. Okay. So what is happening here is the current I that is entering, right? It is going towards a junction. What is happening? It's going towards a junction. Since it is a square, right? Since it's a square, both the sides are going to be of equal length. And since it is made, made up of the same material, resistivity is same and area of cross-section is same. So what can we conclude? That the resistance of this square and this square is going to be the same. As a result of which, this current I will get split symmetrically according to Kirchhoff's current law. So you should not take the current to be I across the conductors. Rather, you should take it as I by 2 and I by 2. Makes sense. So this I by 2 will flow across BC also. And this I by 2 will flow across DC also. So these I by 2s put together is going to be the value of current that is coming out of the conductor or coming out of the system. Makes sense? Right? Okay. So what is the value of magnetic field? It is 0 0.25 Tesla. Right? Side is going to be 20 centimeters, so 20 into 10 power minus 2 meter. Okay. Find the magnitude and direction of the magnetic forces on the four sides of the frame. So, what is going to be the force on AD? What is the force on AD? Same formula BIL sine of how much is the value of theta? I am going to use the same formula. B is how much? 0.25, that is 1 by 4 into current is how much? Current value is given 2 ampere. No, so it will be 1 ampere here, 1 ampere across each conductor. So 1 into length of the conductor is so 20 into 10 power minus 2 into sine theta is 1. So 4 will cancel this 25 times. The answer will be 5 into 10 power minus 2 newton. Right, this is the force on AD. If I write it in the vector form using the right hand thumb rule, okay, using the Fleming's left hand rule, what can you say is the direction? Magnetic field is in this direction, current is in this direction. So, how are we going to adjust it? So, magnetic field is in this direction, so current is in this direction, so force will be downward. Are you able to understand? Okay, that is one way, or else I told you another way also, you can use the right hand th thumb rule. Curl the fingers of your right hand from the direction of current towards magnetic field. I into L vector cross B vector. That will be downward. Both will give you the same answer. So whichever is convenient for you, you can use it. Okay. So the force is going to be downward. Clear? Next is, what is the force across the wire DC? So this will be equal to the same B I L sine theta. Magnitude is going to be the same. So it is going to be 5 into 10 power minus 2 Newton. So every wire is going to have the same amount of, is going to experience the same amount of force. But what will change? The directions. Okay. For DC, it will be in the leftward direction. We can apply and see. Field in this direction. Current is downward. Extend the thumb. Thumb is in the leftward direction. I repeat it, field outside, thumb, uh, sorry, central finger in the downward direction, thumb towards the left. Okay. <clears throat> what about BC? Field in this direction, central finger. So you need to 
tilt it like this so it is going to be downward so here also it is downward what about ab field so it's the same like this no same like bc it is going to be in the leftward direction so ad and bc will experience the force in the downward direction and ab and dc will experience the force in the leftward direction clear with this right yeah so just make a note of Shall I proceed? Hmm. So the next set of problems that we'll see is forces between parallel current carrying wires. Forces between parallel current carrying wires. So what is the force per unit length going to be? Force per unit length is mu naught I1 I2 divided by 2 pi R. And force on length L of one of the wires. Length L of one of the wires is equal to mu naught I1 I2 into L divided by 2 pi R. Now understand this. If there are two parallel current carrying conductors and the, the distance of separation between them is R, or you can take it as D also. Right? If you see the derivation that we have done, we would have taken it as D, just to ensure that I'll change this as D. Okay. So if the currents across the wires are flowing like this, if the current is I1 and I2, these two wires are considered to be long wires. I told you, you know, whenever there are long wires, you cannot directly calculate the force. Rather, you can only calculate the force per unit length. So force per unit length, if you take it as small f, how oh, you take it as small f. So force per unit length is going to be given as mu naught I1, I2, the whole divided by 2 pi into d. Make sense? Suppose what they will do is they'll ask you what is the force on a particular length of the conductor. If they ask you a question of what is a force in this kind of a system, they can ask you only on a length of a conductor. So for that, you take a small length L, you take a small length L, then capital F is given as the same formula, mu naught I1 I2 divided by 2 pi D multiplied with small L. Am I right? So this is going to be the capital if that is a force experienced by a part of the conductor, right? Everything else is going to have the same value. Mu naught is 4 pi into 10 power minus 7, all are standard values, right? So based on this, we'll try to do the problem. Just make a quick note of it. Right? Shall I proceed? Yeah. So look at the first problem. First problem is 
a current of 5 ampere flows through each of two parallel long wires so the wires are 2.5 cm apart calculate the force acting per unit length on each wire use the standard value of constant required that is mu naught that is 4.2 10 power minus 7 what will be the nature of force if both currents flow in the same direction okay so what is it we have two wires which are carrying the currents in the same direction of how much magnitude 5 ampere and 5 ampere and what is the distance of separation between the meters d which is equal to 2.5 centimeters so it is actually 5 by 2 into 10 power minus 2 meter so i converted 2.5 to fractional value right now all that we need to calculate is the force per unit length which is represented by small f okay so force per unit length is given as mu naught i1 i2 the whole divided by 2 pi into d so what is mu naught by 2 pi it is going to be 2 into 10 power <coughs> minus 7 see mu <coughs> mu naught by 4 pi is 10 um, 10 power minus 7 so mu naught by 2 pi will be 2 into 10 power minus 7 into i1 and i2 have the same magnitude so it will be 25 the whole divided by what is the distance of separation it is 5 by 2 so 5 by 2 into 10 power minus 2 so 5 will cancel this 25 5 times 2 will go to the numerator it will become 4 4 into 5 is going to be 20 so 20 into 10 power minus 5 newton per meter okay now the next question is what will be the nature of force if the currents flowing if the if both the currents are flowing in the same direction so if the currents are flowing in the same direction they always attract each other so here it is exactly the reverse scenario of what happens with charges and magnets so for charges what will happen like poles ripple no whereas like di directions of current here will be reverse it will attract so remember it like that why it will get attracted is because you calculate the direction of field due to the first pair at this point and then find the direction of force experienced by the second conductor due to the magnetic field from first conductor that will be to the left if you do the reverse scenario the force experienced by this conductor will be to the right so since they both are coming close to each other they will attract okay this is a very 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 important point to be noted because in this question they ask you what is the nature of force by mentioning that the currents are flowing in the same direction sometimes what they will do is they will say that the conductors are getting attracted that is all they'll mention so indirectly what are they telling you that the currents are in same direction so you should know that information is it clear okay just make a note of Shall I proceed? What is the answer we got? Do this. A long horizontal wire P carries a current of 50 ampere. It is rigidly fixed. Another fine wire Q is placed directly above and parallel to P. Read this question and try to do it. It is a combination of balancing the weight and force.
I will show this. Listen. A long horizontal wire P carries a current of 50 ampere. So there is a wire P which carries a current of 50 ampere. I have not yet mentioned the direction. I will do it. Okay, 50 ampere. Another fine wire Q is placed directly above and parallel to P. Right, it is placed above. The weight of the wire Q is, so this wire has a weight acting in this direction of how much value? 0 0.075 Newton per meter. So actually they didn't give you the weight directly. They gave you the weight per unit length. Newton per meter, and it carries a current of 25 ampere. Find the position of the wire Q from the wire P so that Q remains suspended, meaning they are asking what is the distance of separation between them so that Q is suspended. Now, tell me one important thing. If I take that the if I take the direction of current in P to be in the rightward direction, what is going to be the direction of current in Q so that it is getting balanced due to magnetic repulsion. It should be in the opposite direction. Right? So, current here is going to be 25 ampere so that the force per unit length, so what is it? It's going to be small f, which is going to be in the upward direction. Right? It is going to be in the upward direction. Am I clear? So the, that's what they asked. Also indicate the direction of Q with respect to P. So P is in the rightward direction. Q is in the leftward direction. Okay. Now tell me, what is the force per unit length that is acting? It is mu naught I1 I2 divided by 2 pi d. And what is the weight of the system? Weight is equal to 0 0.075 Newton per meter. Am I clear with this? So, F is equal to mu naught by 2 pi is going to be how much? 2 into 10 power minus 7 into what is the value of I1 into I2? 50 into 25, which is going to be 50 into 25, 1250. The whole divided by D is what we need to find. This is equal to the weight per unit length. So, this force and this, fo this force per unit length and this force per unit length should be same. So, how much will this be? 0 0.075 means it is 75 divided by 1000. Am I clear? So, uh, actually, 25 will cancel this three times. It will cancel this 50 times. D will be equal to how much? 15 to 200. 100 into 10 power minus 7 is 10 power minus 5. So, 10 power minus 5 into 10 power 3 is going to be 10 power minus 2, the whole divided by 3. So, it will actually be 3.3, sorry, No need so they have directly given you the weight no weight is given in terms of newton per meter yeah
हेलो नमस्ते व्हाट इज हैपनिंग स्कूल रे एवरीबॉडी सो टायर्ड फ्रॉम स्कूल दे अंगो और विकेट आउट आउट है किर क्या येन्ना व्हाट इज हैपनिंग व्हाई आर यू पीपल सो टायर्ड पुरी ले I didn't get you, da. Prano, can you be? आप इंगे वंदी यं तुंग रिंगे, अंगे तुंग वंदी इतना, हाँ? Read English, sir. Ask them for a pod, ra. Or pod or bean bag, इलान केट रिंगे. Take rest, no. At least sleep there and come. At least here, come fresh, no. You're coming here and sleeping. I'm also sleepy. I slept only for three hours yesterday. Last night, sorry, not. Uh, I slept only for three. I am also sleepy. Now I am pushing myself. No, you can write a petition to school asking for a pod. Can I pay? No, sir. Madhya no. I need fifteen minutes nap. Power nap. And then we will practice. Sir, dear. In here, and then you go and enter. नहीं एंगा पे ही बना तो इंगे इंगे तुम कर राइट शैल वी प्रोसीड या इट इस पॉइंट थ्री थ्री सेंटीमीटर और थ्री पॉइंट थ्री थ्री मिलीमीटर बोथ आर सेम सो इनटू टेन पावर माइनस वन इट्स द सेम थिंग Okay, so they will not ask this kind of problems because it's fine. Ah, so we'll do the next set of problems that is based on torques that are acting on a current carrying loop. So till now, what we did is we calculated the force that is experienced by a straight current carrying conductor. Right now, we'll see what is the torque experienced by a current carrying loop. So, generally, what are current carrying loops? Current carrying loops are magnetic dipoles. Right. So, whenever you place a dipole in external field, it need not be only electric or magnetic. Whenever a dipole is placed in external field, it experiences torque. So, it is going to rotate. Right. So, what is the principle on which? So, what device is going to work on this principle? Galvanometer, right? All you can think of galvanometer, ammeter, and voltmeter. All these things work on the same concept, right? So, what is the formula for torque here? Torque that is acting on a current carrying loop in place uh, that is placed in magnetic field is torque is equal to N I B A sine theta. Torque is N I B A sine theta, where N is the number of turns, I is the current, B is the magnetic field, A is the area, sine theta. Theta is the angle between Theta is angle between B vector and A vector, right? What you can do is you can re you can replace this n into I into A with another physical quantity called as small m. What does small m stand for? It is a magnetic dipole moment. So it is also written as m b sine theta. In this case, you can say sine theta is the angle between. M vector and B vector. So, if you compare these two, right? The logic says that the direction of M vector is the same as the direction of A vector. So, M vector and A vector are in the same direction. Okay. So, here it is mentioned, M is equal to n into I into A. So, this is a scalar representation of writing it. Then, what is the vector notation? Torque vector in the vector form. If you write it, it is going to be M vector cross B vector. Okay, so it is m vector cross b vector. Just make a quick note of.
Shall we proceed? Yes. So the first problem based on torque is the maximum torque acting on a coil of effective area 0 0.04 meter square is 4 into 10 power minus 8 newton meter when a current when the current in it is 100 micro ampere find the magnetic induction in which it is kept magnetic induction here means the magnetic field okay so it's a simple formula torque is equal to mb sin theta or in this case we can use torque is equal to niba sin theta right you will use niba sin theta now since they told effective area right you can take n into a to be the effective area so i want to stress on one point here whenever they mention the word coil right coil will have more than one turn whereas if they mention the word loop it will have only one turn but here if you see it is mentioned as coil but they didn't give you the number of turns instead what they have given you is something called as the effective area that effective area can be treated as the number of turns multiplied with the area okay so n into a is how much 0 0.04 so 4 into 10 power minus 2 is n into a what is the value of i 100 micro ampere 100 into 10 power minus 6 into what is the magnetic field that's what we need to find into sign of how much should the angle be taken as so i should take sign of 90 degrees what is the reason for it they use a the word maximum torque so maximum torque is always generated when the value of theta is 90 so sine 90 is maximum okay so what is the value of the torque 4 into 10 power minus 8 4 and 4 are gone sine 90 is 1 so what is the value of b b will be equal to 10 power minus 8 divided by this is 10 power minus 4 into 10 power minus 2 it will become 10 power minus 6 so 10 power minus 8 by 10 power minus 6 is going to be 10 power minus 2 tesla let me check it again 10 power minus 8 this is 10 power minus 6 into 10 power actually we can cancel these so it'll be 1 by 100 which is 10 power minus 2 test it is a same right so this will be the answer of course you can't find the direction in this problem okay one minute let me check the answer yeah 10 power minus 2 see they have given something like this no wb per meter square wb per meter square is also called as tesla wb stands for weber w e b e r weber is a unit of magnetic flux about this we'll learn in the sixth chapter okay but as of now you can report the answer like how i did itself you can write it in terms of tesla itself okay so just telling you so that if you see a question in terms of weber don't get confused Right. Shall I proceed to the next one? Yeah. Calculate the torque on a 100 turn rectangular coil. See here, observe. They use the word coil and coil has 100 turns. So capital N is equal to 100 and it is a rectangular coil of length how much? 40 into 10 power minus 2 meter and breadth is how much 20 into 10 power minus 2 meter carrying a current of how much value it will carry a current of 10 ampere when placed making an angle theta is equal to 60 degree with the magnetic field so magnetic field value is given as three tesla so who is making an angle of 60 degree with the magnetic field
who is making an angle 60 degree with the magnetic field listen to this carefully so if this is a coil if this is a rectangular coil right calculate the torque on this coil which has 100 turns which has a length of 40 and breadth of 20 let's say it is like this carrying a current of 10 ampere when placed making an angle 60 degree with the magnetic field see if suppose this is the magnetic field okay i'll, I'll keep it like this right if this is the magnetic field the coil is making an angle 60 degree with the magnetic field, meaning if you see from the top, it look like this. So the angle between whom? Angle between the coil and the magnetic field is 60. But what is the value of theta that you need to substitute in the formula? Is it the angle between the coil and the magnetic field or area and the magnetic field? Area and magnetic field, no. So what happens is, if this is how the coil is making an angle 60 degree with the magnetic field. Give me a pen. Then the aerial vector will be perpendicular to it. It will be in this direction. So if this angle is 60, how much will this angle be? So you need to take 30. So don't make a mistake of taking theta is equal to 60. So theta is not 60. Rather, theta in this case, you will take it as 30. The reason why I'm calling this as theta is because that's what the formula says. So what is the formula here? Torque is equal to n i d a sin theta, where n is going to be 100, i is 10. What is the value of d? It is going to be 3. And what is the value of a? It is 800. Area is basically length into breadth. 4, 40 into 20, it is going to be 800. Yeah, 800 into 10 power minus 4, which is 8 into 10 power minus 2. So 8 into 10 power minus 2 into sine of, how much should I take? Sine of 30 degrees. So sine 30 is going to be half. So half will cancel this 8, 4 times. 4 into 3 is 12. So you will get 12 into 10 power minus 2 into 10 power 4. Answer will be 12 into 10 power 2 Newton meter. So 12 into 10 power 2 Newton meter or 1200 Newton meter. Is the point here? Okay. Then so did I make any calc? I saw 120 is the answer. Did I miss anything? One minute. What is the correction? Okay, correction. So this is 12 into yeah, 100 and 10 power minus 2 get cancelled. So 12 into 10, which is going to be 120. Newton meter. So this will be the answer. It's not. So it is 120 Newton meter. Okay. Okay, these are few such problems that are based on torque. Torque, it's the same logic again and again. You, you're going to apply the same formula, NIBA sin theta or MB sin theta, depending on the problem. Did you understand why we used NIBA? Because that's the data given. Right? So, yeah. So, the next set of concepts that is left out is galvanometer and conversion of galvanometer to an ammeter and voltmeter. So, this one is what is left out. One is galvanometer where we have these formulae about calculating the current sensitivity, figure of merit and the voltage sensitivity. And the next set that we have is yeah, conversion of galvanometer to ammeter and voltmeter, which we'll try to complete in tomorrow's class. Okay. So revise the formula and come. I will try to do three, three problems in each, which would be sufficient. Of post which you try out the problems from NCRT. If you have doubts, reach out. Okay. Any other doubts here? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Video. Okay. 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 Okay.
எனக்கு ஒரு செவன் ஓ கிளாக் ஒரு மெசேஜ் பண்ணுங்க செவன் ஓ கிளாக் ஒரு மெசேஜ் மட்டும் ட்ராப் பண்ணுங்க திஸ் ஒன் ஓகே L into B is 800 into 10 power minus 4. Because it's in centimeter, no? Uh, it's getting multiplied. You're not adding them. You should not take it. When you're multiplying 10 power minus 2, you'll get multiplied with 10 power minus 2. Because both are in centimeter, no? 1 centimeter square is 10 power minus 4 meters square. So I'll wind up this session. there we can wind up uh, thank you sir yeah